I'm refretting this 63 rosewood board Telecaster and I've already taken out the frets and cleaned the slots. Before I fret it, I want to fix a few chips that I found that were created when someone refretted this maybe 20 or 30 years ago. Some are big, some are little. There's a lot of ways you can fix chips and depending on how much work you want into it will tell you what you're going to do. One thing you'll always get are these little flakes. There's a flake right here that's just lifted up if you don't fix it right away, it'll blow off onto your desk and you won't find it. So I'm going to fix that one first. Be sure to use a little piece of Teflon fret dam in the fret slot so the glue doesn't run down in there. And you use super glue because it's instantaneous. Probably the simplest and quickest fix is to fill small chips with sawdust that matches the fretboard and super glue. Like one right here. Of course, you want to level that sawdust fill down once it's hard, which it is. To do that, I'll start out with a razor saw to get close to the wood because it cuts in a way that I like. I put a little piece of very thin cellophane tape around that fill just to protect me a little bit. If I hit that, I know I'm getting too close. I'm happy with this, that little flake that popped up glued down clean. And the sawdust fill looks super good. And if you put a fret over it, you can see how it hides. So now I want to move on with the big lesson of today, which is how to inlay a piece of wood into a fretboard to hide a big chip. And this guitar belonged to Mike Bloomfield, and he played like a Rolling Stone on it back in 1963 or 65. And I'm going to treat it the best way I know how. And the first thing you do is sharpen your chisel. Even the best chisels don't stay sharp forever. I'll be cutting a V-shaped wedge in the fretboard so that my inlay follows the grain of the wood. And to do that, I'm going to grind a V-shape in this feeler gauge. That'll be a template that I'll use to cut with a razor knife and a chisel and get a clean line. And then I'll use it again on my inlay patch. I use the Dremel tool on a medium speed to grind that V and I use the foot switch so that I don't have to turn the tool on and off all the time. To hold my template in place, I'm using Don McCrosty's safe slot nut guard. It's going to hold the feeler gauge here while I do my work. Now these two little grinds here were my first ones. It took me three grinds to get a good clean edge to it. I slide that right over the chip making sure that it's clean on both sides, so I'll be cutting into new wood. Line that up. And I think I'll bring in a little scissor jack to give that support, because I'll be pressing pretty tight on that. And I'm in the neck jig. I don't want to... Yeah, that's good right there. All I'm going to do is come in real close with a brand new blade and my razor knife. I'm cutting very lightly. I'm just wanting to break the wood at the top so the knife doesn't follow the grain. Then I'll follow these marks with a chisel and excavate this wood. And I'm following that little thin razor li line just enough to really get down in there. Now I can hear it chopping. So now I've got a secondary cut with the chisel on top of that razor cut, pushing down pretty firm so it's really lined out. And I'm going to get rid of the feeler gauge for now and use that scissor jack. Here's a little uh, micro chisel just to start picking out some of that wood. It's cut on the sides. I can chip wood off the walls with my chisel. It makes you a little nervous cutting into something that belonged to your hero. First time I saw Mike Bloomfield play, it was on this guitar. Well, on this neck. This isn't the body. That's just holding the neck. And you don't have to dig it out perfectly flush on the bottom. Just enough that it's a true inlay and has a glue joint on the bottom. Now, in a demonstration like this on a videotape, I might use some body language that I wouldn't otherwise. For example, there's a camera here, so I would probably come around here and be working free of that camera. That camera is right in my face because it's in close, so I can get a real good close-up and you see what's 
this is really like, as opposed to the camera standing back there on a the tripod and you can't tell. Break it away from the side wall. That's clean enough. I can start making a fill and do kind of work them together. This fingerboard is Brazilian rosewood, so that's what I'm going to use to patch it with. This color matches pretty good. It's got some of that sort of an orangey color in it. And the grain, if I turn it this direction a little bit, it's going to be more natural to the grain of the fingerboard. And I use that same little template to mark that out. My first cut is just enough. I'll see them later. Now I'm going to saw this little chunk out so I can work on it. I've cut it to a slight V on the bandsaw, rough cut. Now I'm going to get a straight, clean cut with the chisel on my drill press. I'm going to chop it with this tool. It's a sharp blade and a holder that chucks into your drill press. You can line it up to cut any miter or line that you want. I came up with this tool to cut binding miters, but it's great for all kinds of stuff. All that work for that little piece. I trimmed the little off the bottom with that chopper to make it a little shorter. It's a good fit. I'm going to put a piece of Teflon fret dam in there. I'm going to drop some number 20 super glue on it. That's the thicker stuff, so it won't just harden in one second. I think I'll pull the dam out for a second and slide this piece in like that. I'm going to push forward on that and press it down in and kind of drive the wedge up into the I'm not going to need a lot of uh, pressure to clamp that in with. Just clamp a capo on it. Okay. It's about 15 minutes. Now i got to shave it down to the board. That's a fun part too. And that's why I sharpened a chisel. I'm not sure which way the grain's cutting on this yet. So I'll just do little bits at a time and go from a lot of different directions. You don't try too much because it could run out on the grain and dig down deeper than you intended to. Watch that black stripe in the center. It may change and it may not. It has been changing. As it runs through the grain, it runs at angles and switches directions. I like to leave a little of this color in there. A good thing to do as you go through your guitar repair life, save pieces of wood. If you have a broken guitar that's no good, save the wood because you'll pat something with it. Like this Brazilian rosewood. I bought about 30 of these things from a guy. That's Brazilian. Perfect grain. Not big enough for a bridge or a fingerboard, but I could make Gibson Tunematic bass bridges for an archtop guitar from this. And I'm using some of this stuff on this. It's going to take me a while of careful scraping to get the glue off because it's sunken down in the grain. That's what the curve's good for. I want to get rid of the super glue on the edges that kind of squeezed out because it sort of looks like a scab. It's really just a thin piece of glue laying on grease. I want to get it off without messing with my inlay too much. It feels pretty good. I think I would go on to a real fine sand stick just and, and buff this a bit. Makes it shine like the rest of the board. And I'll tell you, when you put a fret on that, and imagine if this was seated down and looked that direction, that's a good looking fill. The little color that I was trying to save and that black line just blend right in. So there you have it. That's three different ways to fill chips. One was very complicated, but worth it because it's Mike Bloomfield's guitar.